If you are a viewer of this channel, you will be fully aware that I've had some Mexican black kingsnake eggs laid. They were actually laid on the 15th, so they should be due around the 15th of July. So exciting stuff. I thought in this video it could be a quick one. We can go over about how I'm incubating, how I'm doing it, the method I'm using, whether I plan to cut eggs, what I'm actually going to do with these offspring when they hatch. And there's a little something for Patreon supporters, at least in the UK. So yeah, let's have a look at some eggs. The incubator that I'm using is a Herp Nursery 2, I believe. Now this is a second-hand incubator. Essentially, it's like a little mini fridge. I can set the temperature via dials. There's a little light. Very simplistic. This actually goes down to five degrees Celsius. So I actually use the same thing to brumate the snakes as well as what I'm using to incubate the eggs now. So a little bit about this incubator. The temperature you actually set to is off by about two degrees of what the actual internal temperature is. So that's why I'm using a digital thermometer and I've got another combo analog hydrometer in there. Just as backup readings, and what I'm doing is I'm playing with the dials on this incubator till both of those thermometers in there generally get to around anywhere from 26 to 28 is where I want it to be. Sometimes this does fluctuate a little bit. I'm not too concerned about that. There are keepers that literally incubate their eggs at room temperature. So I'm really not going to be too panicky about the temperatures that I set these to. Ignore the book that was in there to prop something up, but it's no longer relevant. I've just not taken the book out. But what I've done is I've used an old Haribo tub. So, oh no, I had to eat some Haribos. And I took my soldering iron and I put holes all around the sides for air holes for the brumating snakes. Now for this actual incubation method, I've taped up all holes bar two so that there is cross ventilation in there, which keeps the lid free of condensation, which means there's not water actually dripping on the eggs. And that's basically what I want. I have full control over that. If I see that it gets too dry, I can tape up one of the holes. If it gets too sweaty in there, I can untape some more holes and increase ventilation. The way that that's done is actually gives me quite a bit of control and I'm quite happy with that. I've used vermiculite, it's my, it's my substrate medium again i didn't use any sort of rule for how much moisture and water i put in there i basically poured some water in mixed it about squeezed it in my hand and if it was kind of like sand castle sand texture i was happy with that if it clumped in my hand but wasn't actually like squeezing out liquid of water that was the consistency that i was going for so i'm actually happy to actually take these eggs out and show you they're not going to keel over for me just showing you. Now I actually have a little bottle of water in there. Basically what this bottle of water is doing is that the temperature of the water changes much more slowly than the air temperature. So the theory is by putting water in there, it should hold its warmth a bit more if the power goes and I can't heat the incubator for a day or two. It's acting as like a little temperature buffer. I don't really think this little bottle's gonna do much, but I've pretty much done it for the sake of it. I think I could probably just incubate these eggs at room temperature anyway, so I'm not really too fussed. But yeah, let's look at the eggs. These are some really, really pearly, healthy eggs. I, I've candled them, there are some vascular aspects to these eggs i was happy with that i'm not going to separate eggs i'm going to leave them exactly as they are i'm not going to cut these eggs i for one think if something can't hatch it wasn't supposed to hatch so that is where i'm going to leave it yes i might make less money by having less mbks to sell but i think genetically as a whole are probably doing the population in the uk hobby more justice not cutting the eggs than if i did We've got some windows forming at the end of the eggs. That's nothing I'm too concerned about. 
yeah, I'm very happy with that. I've got complete control over the way I've done that with the tape. Eggs are doing well, and hopefully, come the 15th of July, we'll have some MBKs. So that's how I'm incubating, that's the plans. What I'm looking to do is when they hatch, I'm looking to actually use these gaps in between these vivs to actually just slot in some really useful boxes for the hatchlings. I don't intend to keep them that long. I don't want to hold on for too long, but if I don't get the right homes, then I will hold on to them. And if they become more of a long-term thing, then I will obviously make some sort of way for them to get UV. I actually have a spare UVB bar, so I may make use of that. UV can actually pass through the lids of rubs, so I may use that as my heat source as well as my UV source. I'd imagine that would warm the warm end quite a substantial amount to the point where I'm getting at least some thigmothermic warmth as well as UV. Um, halogens in a rub is not really going to happen. And that's okay as long as their long-term home ends up being someone that's going to look after them properly. And because of that, what I'm going to do is Patreon supporters are going to get first refusal. And then after that, I will give first refusal to viewers of the channel outside of Patreon. And then it will go to outside sources. But you guys are basically the sort of keepers that I want these babies going to. So especially if you're in the UK, I'm looking to sell to you in particular. That's if you're interested. I imagine if you've been watching these MBKs long enough, you either have an MBK or you at least have an interest in MBKs. The price is going to be £300 per baby as well as some add-on costs. So basically what I'm going to do is this entire clutch is going to get a full parasitology screening and a clearance before they will go out. So what I'll do is I'll get a full parasitology check, including crypto, from the lab and I'll do a collective sample of the whole clutch. And when that comes back clear, that'll, that'll add on an extra five pound cost to each baby, as well as I'm going to get them all genetically sexed. So that will be roughly $15 per animal. So we're looking at roughly including postage if I add on the cost to the animal like that. We're talking the actual total price of an MBK from me being £320. So I think that's a pretty good price considering retail at the moment in the shop that I work at is $350 and in other shops they're selling them for $400. So $320 from me, bred under UV, um, full genetic screen, so you know exactly the sex you're buying, um, clear from at least one list of diseases. So I obviously don't don't just take that as a don't need to quarantine or test. Obviously, do your own system when you get the animal. But yeah, basically looking to sell to the UK hobby um, and then use a courier to get them to you. I'm not going to let people come and collect them from me because I don't want to disclose where I live, and I'm sure people understand. The logistics of that when you're putting yourself out there in the hobby so i don't really want to put my address out there so yeah exciting stuff i'm trying to showcase how the hobby can do things properly there's no reason not to screen for disease when you can just add it on to the cost of the animal i'd much rather spend that extra fiver on animal to have an already clear report back on a list of different diseases so i'm trying to put my best foot forward and show how you can really do things and still make a bit of money for your hobby and look after animals properly but thank you for the patreon supporters for supporting the channel you are basically funding the running of this channel at this point so if you want to support the channel you can head over to patreon reptiles and research but other than that go ahead and look at the video of olivia actually laying her eggs and i'll see you in another video